Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about uh, pre-Mendelian concepts about heredity. So in the previous video, we had discussed about what is heredity and variation. Okay, what is heredity? Heredity means transfer of characters from one generation to another generation. So how the characters are transferred from one generation to another generation for these questions different scientists has given different explanations in the form of theories so all these theories uh, i have written here the uh, five important theories which i have written here uh, have given uh, had given by uh, different scientists before mendel experiment before mendel experiment so these are the five important theories that are preformation theory given by swammer dam and bennett Epigenesis or theory of epigenesis given by Wolf, inheritance of acquired characters given by Lamarck, pangenesis or theory of pangenesis given by Charles Darwin, germplasm theory or August is given by August Weisman. So these theories, uh, in these in these five theories, uh, only two theories are universally accepted, and remaining three theories are not accepted because of not having scientific proof. So today. We will discuss all these uh, five theories one by one. Okay, first let us come to preformation theory given by Swammerdam and Bennett. So according to this theory, organisms developed from miniature versions of themselves. That means humuncules or animalcules. That is miniature human was preformed in gametes. So male gamete that is sperm, female gametes that is egg. So already a miniature that means a small sized human being is uh, already present in uh, these gametes uh, those, those are developed into humans. So the development of zygote resulted only in the growth of miniature human which was already present in the egg and sperm. So this is not what happening actually. And uh, this theory which was given by Swammerdam and Bennett has no scientific proof. Generally according to, uh, according to zygote formation, how the zygote will form by the fertilization of egg and sperm. But here what this theory is saying as, this theory is saying as already a miniature that means human killers or animal kills in the uh, human being a miniature human being is already present in the gametes so that will develop into a big human being but uh, that is not actually happening and uh, and this preformation theory given by Swammerdam and Bennett is not having the scientific proof so this is totally rejected and this is not at all accepted anymore so then we come to theory of epigenesis uh, given by Wolf so the Theory of epigenesis uh, given by Wolf is according to this theory, the egg or sperm cell does not contain the miniature humans. So Wolf uh, rejected uh, this uh, preformation theory and given the statement that the egg or sperm cell doesn't consist the miniature humans. So I have already told you the fertilization of egg that is female gamete and sperm that is male gamete they both fertilize and gives rise to zygote and the, in this zygote differentiation will happen and uh, a human being will develop that means uh, differentiation of this zygote into various organs uh, and it will produce the human being that means uh, juvenile so this is having the scientific proof to so this is this theory is universally accepted this theory is universally accepted and let us come to another theory that is a theory of acquired characters theory of acquired characters is given by Lamarck and according to this theory that is a theory of acquired characters generally the parents the new character once acquired by an individual those characters are passed to its progeny and what uh, okay let me explain this with an example if man develops muscles by exercise all his children will have strong muscle or if the man becomes weak all his children will be weak so the character which is acquired by parents will be 
transferred to its progeny. According to this theory given by Lamarck, the new character which are once acquired by an individual, those are definitely passed to its progeny. And this theory was which is given by Lamarck is totally disproved by August Weismann. So he conducted an experiment that is he amputated the that means he removed the or he cut the tail of a mice. He cut the tail of a mice for successive 22 successive generations. Even after the 22nd successive generation also, the baby mice which is evolving from that, from that parent mice which is not having the tail also having the tail. That means the baby mice which is which is an offspring of the mice which is, uh, for which the tail is amputated is also having the tail so by every time the baby mice got the tail so according to this acquired acquired theory of acquired acquired characters here for a parent we have removed this tail so so obviously the progenies which are evolved from this mice should not have the tail no so but this is not happening in every generation the of, at every generation uh, of mice they are having the tail so by this experiment uh, August Weismann disproves the theory of acquired characters. So this is also not having the scientific proof and already the August Weismann has disproved this theory. So this theory is not at all accepted. So okay next we will come to theory of pangenesis. Theory of pangenesis. This was given by Charles Darwin. According to this theory, according to, to this theory here invisible copies of body parts those are called gemmules that means invisible copies of body parts will uh, pass through the bloodstream and reaches the gamete and here that invisible body parts move to the gametes through bloodstream in gametes these these gemmules are assembled okay what this theory will tell you you know so to this gamete to gametes the invisible copies of body parts will reach through the bloodstream and in the gametes these invisible body parts will get assembled so these invisible copies of body parts are called gemmules so after that after fertilization of these gametes the gemmules uh, move out of the different parts of the body resulting in the development of respective organ and uh, this theory is also not having the scientific proof. So, theory of pangenesis is also not accepted and it is uh, rejected. And here we will discuss about one thing that is uh, if uh, defective gemmule. So, what is gemmule? The invisible body part. So, the gemmule, uh, defective gemmule, if the gemmule, that the invisible part is not, uh, uh, not good or it is defective, leads to the formation of defective organ of an individual. So, for example, I will explain this sentence, like, uh, if the progeny is not having a, uh, is uh, not having a good hand or a good ear or good nose or whatever it may be, if the individual is not having the, is uh, is not having the good body part that means they are not received the good gemmule okay so they received the defective gemmule so the individual is having the defective organ so this theory is also not having the scientific proof so it is rejected so it is rejected okay so the theory of pangenesis is rejected okay let uh, let's next we will discuss about germplasm theory given by august weismann so according to this theory, the body tissues are of uh, two types that is somatoplasm and germplasm. So first we will come to the germplasm. So germplasm, what the germplasm include means reproductive tissues or cells which produce gametes. So germplasm means reproductive the reproductive tissues or cells which produce the gametes. Other than reproductive tissues or cells that body tissues are called somatoplasm so somatoplasm includes body tissues other than sexual reproduction tissues germplasm includes reproductive tissues or cells which produce gametes so according to august weismann 
theory that is germplasm theory he divided body tissues into two parts that is somatoplasm and germplasm so germplasm means it includes reproductive tissues or cells which produce gametes and somatoplasm it includes body tissues other than sexual reproduction tissues okay so germplasm the transformation of characters takes place only through germplasm from one generation to another generation so here we are we have already discussed that tissues or cells which produce gametes comes under germplasm and the gametes what are the what are the gametes we are having sperm and egg so the those two gametes will fuse that means they will get fertilized and they produce a zygote so if there is any change in the gametes or if there is change in gametes then definitely the changes will seen or transferred to another generation that means if the if the change is seen in gametes so the germplasm is changed so the transformation of characters takes place only through germplasm from one generation to another generation that is already we will know so if there is any change in gametes or in germplasm definitely that change will lead to next generation so any change in germplasm will lead to change in next generation so this theory is also having the scientific proof and this theory is widely accepted so let us come to the theories which are accepted theory of epigenesis and theory of and germplasm theory these two theories are accepted theories widely accepted or universally accepted theories so okay preformation theory inheritance of acquired characters theory of panagenesis these three theories uh, uh, given by swamardam and bennett lamark and charles darwin respectively are rejected because of not having the scientific proof okay so the theory of uh, epigenesis and germplasm theory given by wolf and august weisman respectively are having the scientific proof and the scientific explanation so theory of epigenesis and the germplasm theory are widely accepted thank you